Like any star, it will run out of fuel in its core and it starts changing, it starts bloating and getting so large that it will engulf the orbit of Mercury and Venus and come very close to Earth. So imagine looking on the horizon and sunrise is half the sky. By the time 2050 rolls around, this Earth will have come to its end, and Neil deGrasse has revealed how that will happen. So the sun expands, Earth gets hot, oceans enter a rolling boil, evaporate into the atmosphere, the atmosphere evaporates into space, and Earth becomes this charred ember as we descend into the cauldron that is the, the surface of the sun. And, and, and it is there that we vaporize. In just a little over 20 years, a supernova will have completely ruined our solar system. But what has led the world down such a tragic path? And is there a way to put a stop to it? Join us as we get into what Neil deGrasse has to say about the supernova that will soon destroy our solar system. The sun's wrath. Everyone's got their take on how the world might meet its end. From infectious diseases running wild, nuclear wars and asteroids hitting Earth, to Mother Nature herself abandoning us, the possibilities are endless. These catastrophic scenarios could wipe us out faster than you could fathom the concept of the world actually ending. Humans can't obliterate Earth. Our planet's gonna keep on orbiting the sun, remaining a part of the solar system long after the point where life no longer exists on this planet. But there's more to the story than meets the eye. Neil deGrasse has found some of these lesser known ways the world could end, and they don't involve humans pressing the big red button Let's start with the sun, our companion since day one. Computer models of stellar evolution acting like crystal balls for stars tell that the sun still has a good 10 billion years left on the clock. We're at about 5 billion now, so that gives us 5 billion more years of solar serenity. But what's gonna happen after that? The sun's core is fusion chaos, turning hydrogen into helium and keeping itself from going supernova. As the hydrogen fuel runs dry, the sun's core morphs into a helium hot spot that craves even hotter temperatures. Without fusion to balance gravity, the core collapses, temperatures soar, and helium starts turning into gold-like carbon. When this show hits its climax, the sun's brightness goes off the charts, and its outer layers balloon up. If something like this ends up happening, Mercury and Venus will be the first ones to become a victim of this very heated event. Then. The expanding sun's fingers would reach out to penetrate Earth's orbit. That's when things will get too hot to handle, as the Earth's thermostat would crank up to 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Our atmosphere would probably get blown into space, and our oceans would boil away, leaving behind a toasted remainder of our planet. Eventually, the sun will throw in the towel on fusion, shedding its skin and revealing its glowing core. Something as scary as this will probably have you thinking that packing our bags for Mars isn't such a bad idea. Andromeda. In about 4 billion years, our Milky Way is set for having to face Andromeda, our neighbor galaxy. The result would be a big disaster, with a new galaxy born from the remnants of both and a total shakeup within space. Stars will form anew, and planets might need to brace for intergalactic turbulence. Once the Sun finishes scorching the Earth, get ready for some serious galactic drama right here in the Milky Way. Out of the sea of galaxies out there, only a select few are moving toward the Earth. The rest are moving in the opposite direction as fast as they can. This was first noticed by Edwin Hubble back in the 1920s. But what's so scary about Andromeda? This behemoth had 300 billion stars, so you can't blame anyone for being scared because it's headed our way. However, there's no emergency. We're on a collision course, inching towards each other at 100 kilometers per second, which is a quarter million miles per hour. At this speed, the 2.2 million light-year gap between us will be history in about 7 billion years. Space is like a bottomless pit of vastness, so there is no need to fret about Andromeda's stars crashing our planet. When our galaxies finally collide, it'll be a spectacle from a safe distance. Most stars will pass by without any big events, but it won't be all smooth sailing. During this event, some stars from Andromeda might swing a bit too close for comfort, throwing our planetary orbits into a conundrum. Comets might take a detour into deep space, or planets that are within their orbits. Let's say one of Andromeda's stars takes a planet or two during a flyby. 
Suddenly, Earth could find itself taking a ride around a new star, which sounds thrilling until you realize it's a climate disaster waiting to happen in place. Too close, and water would be gone, lost to the atmosphere. Too far, and it could lead to the global ice age. Now here's the thing, even if we come up with some crazy tech to extend the sun's cosmic lease, getting flung into the void makes it all moot. Without our trusty sun nearby, Earth's thermostat plummets to Arctic levels, and the atmosphere goes from breathable air to liquid to frozen solid in a snap. We'd freeze within mere moments. The inevitable. When it comes to the grand scheme of events, we can't avoid the inevitable. No matter where you look or hide, the universe is on a march towards a peculiar fate. The latest scientific news, based on how many things are out there in space, and how fast everything is moving, paints a scary picture. We're headed for a cosmic expansion that won't hit the brakes. Think about the early universe. It's like a trillion degree stew of matter and energy. A cosmic concoction called the primordial soup. This wild mix of ingredients set the stage for everything we see today. Over the next 14 billion years, as the universe threw its weight around and expanded, the heat gradually simmered down, and now we're at a cool three degrees on the Kelvin scale. But there's more to the story. That chilly background temperature might not affect us a lot here on Earth, thanks to the sun keeping things toasty. But behind the curtain, each new generation of stars gets its big break from interstellar gas clouds. The trouble is, these clouds are running on fumes, like a car low on gas. Almost half the galaxies out there have already tapped out their supply. So what's the next act? Well, the megastars go out with a bang. They blow up into supernovae, flinging their insides across the galaxy. This stellar shrapnel becomes the building blocks for new stars. But most stars, like our reliable sun, eventually run out of gas. After a grand finale as giant stars, they collapse into orbs that radiate their leftover warmth into space. When it comes to stars, you've got black holes, neutron stars, white dwarfs, and even brown dwarfs, all of which have one common thread. They're each hoarding building blocks because when stars fizzle out and new ones take a break, the universe is left with no shining stars. Now what about us? We're sun worshippers, relying on our big old star for our daily energy. If the sun and every other star fade to black, life on Earth will take a nosedive. Eventually, everything will slow down and the cosmos will be chilled to the bone. Earth will be left out in the cold like a forgotten pie cooling on a windowsill. But here's the twist. Earth's fate isn't a solo act. Trillions of years from now, when the stars have all died and every cosmic dance move has run out of steam, the entire universe will cool down to the same background temperature. Space travel won't save the day. Even the hottest spots will freeze solid. So, there's basically no way out. However, if this is scary for you, there are other end-of-the-world theories out there that will leave you sleepless at night. The Big Rip In the vast field of physical cosmology, there's a mind-bending theory known as the Big Rip, a speculative model that ponders the ultimate destiny of our universe. Imagine a future where everything, from stars and galaxies down to atoms and the very fabric of space-time itself, is torn apart by the universe's expansion. So here's how it goes. According to the standard cosmological model, the universe's scale factor, which is the measure of its expansion, is currently accelerating. This acceleration is driven by something called dark energy, and as we look to the distant future, this expansion is predicted to speed up exponentially. But here's where things get a little crazy. Imagine this expansion not just speeding up, but going off the charts, with the universe stretching at an ever-increasing rate. The key player in this drama is a form of dark energy called phantom energy. Unlike other types of dark energy that fade away over time, phantom energy is like an unchecked wildfire. It keeps growing stronger as the universe expands. So, what happens in a universe dominated by phantom energy? As the universe accelerates, the observable universe, the space that we can see, actually shrinks. This shrinking horizon means that distant objects and the cosmic event horizon, the boundary beyond which light cannot reach us, get closer and closer. It's like the universe is collapsing in on itself, now, fast forward to the end game, which is the Big Rip. In this final event, the universe reaches a singularity, a point of infinite density and infinite expansion. The observable universe shrinks to zero size, and all distances between objects shoot off to infinity. The brains behind this theory, led by Robert R. Caldwell of Dartmouth College, have even crunched the numbers. According to their calculations, 
The time from now until the Big Rip can be estimated using a nifty equation involving dark energy's equation of state parameter, Hubble's constant, and the density of matter in the universe. But here's the thing. Observations from the Chandra X-ray Observatory hint that the value of the state parameter might fall within a range that doesn't rule out the Big Rip. If the state parameter is less than minus 1, but greater than or equal to approximately minus 1.075, the countdown to the Big Rip could be ticking, with a possible timeline of around 152 billion years into the future. To paint a clear picture, let's consider their example. Imagine a universe where the state parameter equals minus 1.5. According to their scenario, galaxies would begin to drift apart 200 million years before the Big Rip hits. About 60 million years before the end, gravity weakens, causing galaxies to fall apart. Then, just three months before the Big Rip, Planetary systems like our solar system lose their gravitational bonds, with planets hurtling off into the expanding void. In the final moments, stars and planets meet a violent end, torn apart as the universe tears itself asunder. At the very last fraction of a second, atoms themselves disintegrate, with electrons flying off and atomic nuclei breaking apart. It's a cataclysm where even space-time itself unravels, leaving the scale factor infinite. Here and now, evidence suggests that the equation of state parameter is hovering near minus 1 in our universe. The closer the equation of state parameter is to minus 1, the further we are from the dreaded Big Rip. If it were exactly minus 1, the Big Rip would be off the table altogether. Now, here's the twist. Measuring the equation of state parameter precisely is no easy feat. Statistical quirks make it tough to pin down its value exactly at minus 1, leaving some wiggle room for the Big Rip in the distant future. Despite the uncertainties, the hunt for clues continues, pushing the boundaries of our cosmic understanding. Existing right in contrast to this is another theory that's just as troubling. The Big Crunch According to this theory, after billions upon billions of years of cosmic expansion, everything suddenly hits reverse. The universe starts collapsing in on itself, shrinking down until it's a mere speck, potentially sparking another massive cosmic reboot. The idea of a big crunch dates way back to 1922, when Russian physicist Alexander Friedman came up with some equations showing that the universe's fate hinges on its density. If there's enough matter, gravity could eventually slam on the brakes of expansion and send us hurtling back toward the starting line. Now here's where things get intense. As the universe crunches down, it gets packed with all sorts of radiation and high-energy particles. Think of it like squeezing the juice out of stars and turning up the heat until everything is one massive fireball, like an inferno reaching temperatures that defy comprehension. Time and space as we know them would be gone. But let's zoom out for a moment. The Big Crunch hinges on one major thing, whether the universe's average energy density, Hubble parameter, and cosmological constant will eventually stop expanding and trigger the ultimate implosion. It's like waiting to see if the universe will collapse under the weight of its own gravity, transforming into a black hole. In the late 90s and early 2000s, astronomers peered deep into space, studying distant supernovas and mapping the cosmic microwave background, the echo of the Big Bang itself. And what did they find? Instead of slowing down, the universe's expansion is speeding up. This discovery shook the cosmic playbook and even earned some people a Nobel Prize in Physics in 2011. In his vision, Paul Davies explains that the Big Crunch will probably happen about 100 billion years from now. As the universe contracts, galaxies start merging and the temperature starts to rise. Stars get cozy, colliding with each other until they can't take the heat anymore. In the final countdown, things get crazy. The universe's temperature skyrockets, tearing atoms and atomic nuclei apart, all getting slurped up into black holes and then, the Big Crunch reaches its conclusion, a singularity so dense and hot that it echoes the birth of the universe itself, almost like the Big Bang, part two. But here's where it gets even more interesting. The Big Crunch theory doesn't just fade into oblivion, it leads straight into another wild idea, which is the Big Bounce. After the universe collapses into a fiery crunch, it rebounds in a cosmic do-over, sparking another epic bang the Big Bounce. In this theory, instead of a single Big Bang, the universe was formed after cycles of expansion and contraction. 
The whole idea of a big bounce first popped up as part of the cyclic model or oscillatory universe interpretation of the Big Bang. According to them, the universe was expanding outwards, then snapping back inwards, only to bounce back again with another explosion. In the early 80s, this theory started to gain traction. Back then, inflation theory swooped in, aiming to solve the horizon problem, which was a puzzle about how distant parts of the universe share similar properties without being in direct contact. Inflation theory proposed a rapid expansion of space right after the Big Bang, smoothing out the wrinkles and stealing the spotlight. But there's more to this Big Bounce saga. Some saw it as a potential solution to the horizon problem, offering a fresh take on how the universe might unfold over time. Fast forward to today, and researchers are still diving deep into the mysteries of the Big Bounce, exploring its implications and putting its predictions to the test. So what's the Big Bounce all about? Well, the Big Bang was just one phase in a much larger cycle. The universe expands, hits its peak, and then contracts back inwards. This cycle could go on endlessly, with each bounce marking a new chapter in the universe's history. According to quantum theory, as density approaches infinity during the contraction phase, the rules of physics start to shift. Fundamental constants like the speed of light might not stay constant, especially in that blink and you'll miss it moment before the universe bounces back for another round. But where did this mind-bending concept all start? The idea of a big bounce has been floating around since the early 20th century, championed by cosmic thinkers like Willem de Sitter and Carl Friedrich von Weizsäcker. These visionaries saw beauty in a cyclic universe, where each contraction leads to a brand new explosion, a do-over that defies the laws of linear time. By the 80s, astronomers were piecing together a clearer picture of the universe's structure. According to them, it was flat, homogeneous, and isotropic, meaning it looked the same in all directions. This led to the rise of inflation theory, stealing the spotlight by offering a slick solution to those pesky puzzles. The term Big Bounce burst onto the scene in the late 80s and early 90s, popping up in scientific articles and books that explored this idea. The notion gained serious traction, especially in loop quantum gravity. In loop quantum cosmology, researchers uncovered tantalizing clues that a Big Bounce might be more than just a theory. It could be a fundamental feature of our universe's birth story. Imagine a universe collapsing in on itself only to rebound and start anew, all guided by the quirky rules of quantum physics that'd make even Einstein scratch his head. But there's more to this. In 2010, Roger Penrose dropped his conformal cyclic cosmology, suggesting that our universe could go through endless cycles of expansion and contraction, each ending with a cosmic crunch and starting with a mind-blowing cosmic bang. And let's not forget about the einstein carton siyama kibble theory, which throws yet another twist into the Big Bounce story. This theory suggests that the universe's bounce might be tied to the dance between gravity and matter, dodging the pitfalls of singularities that plague other cosmic models. Now, critics raise valid points. Some argue that if the Big Bounce were real, we'd see cosmic fingerprints left behind in the form of cosmic microwave background radiation. But so far, observations haven't quite lined up with this idea. A nuclear war. In our world today, with the existence of nuclear warheads, there's a chilling theory that looms large, the idea of a nuclear apocalypse, sometimes called the nuclear holocaust or atomic Armageddon. This grim scenario revolves around the catastrophic detonation of nuclear weapons on a massive scale, unleashing global devastation and radioactive fallout. The nuclear doomsday unfolds in two terrifying phases. First, the immediate destruction. Nuclear warheads would rain down, obliterating cities with devastating blasts and claiming millions of lives in an instant. It's a grim and deadly scenario that would reshape our world in a matter of minutes. Then comes the aftermath, the fallout. After a nuclear explosion, radiation hangs heavy in the air, triggering widespread illness and death. You've got a mere 10 minutes of safety before the fallout begins. Survivors scramble to find refuge, seeking shelter in bomb-proof bunkers or seeking safety zones to ride out the worst of the radiation. But the fallout isn't just radiation, it's a cascade of nightmarish consequences. The atmosphere is thrown into chaos, with firestorms raging and nuclear winters descending, blanketing the planet in freezing darkness. Radiation sickness spreads far and wide, claiming lives long after the initial blasts. And if that weren't enough, 
electromagnetic pulses from the bombs fry modern technology, plunging us back into a dark age. The nuclear apocalypse, as envisioned by doomsday theorists, paints a grim picture of societal collapse and the potential extinction of humanity. It's a chilling reminder of the destructive power we wield and the catastrophic consequences that could unfold. The Rapture the rapture is a significant event in certain Christian teachings about the end of the world. The idea revolves around Jesus coming back, but it's not just one big show. It's a two-act play. In the first act, Jesus comes by for a secret mission with all the good Christians, whether they're alive on earth or sleeping in their graves six feet under. This is what we call the rapture. You can imagine it as an epic transformation where believers are taken away to meet Jesus in the clouds. And the best part? This grand exit is kept on the down low, so people who aren't included won't even realize what hit them. Then comes Act 2, which happens after this heavenly reunion. Jesus takes his team of good believers, the ones who got raptured, and heads back to Earth. However, there's going to be seven years of rough times ahead. This period, known as the Great Tribulation, is like the ultimate test of survival, with all kinds of chaos, including lava floods and demonic battles. Of course, this theory isn't everyone's cup of tea. Studies show that only about a third of Protestant ministers these days are down with the whole pre-tribulation rapture idea. But Catholics have a slightly different take. They believe that when St. Paul mentioned meeting Christ in the clouds, it wasn't about going to heaven. It's more about rolling out the red carpet for him and joining him right here on earth. More of a figurative homecoming than a literal liftoff. Now you might have heard the term rapture tossed around in Buddhist circles too, but it holds a whole different meaning over there. In Buddhism, rapture isn't about end times. It's about a blissful state during meditation. It's a deep, joyful feeling instead. Something existing right in contrast to the Catholic concept. Climate change and alien invasion. Climate change is not just a buzzword. It's a very real crisis that's got scientists and experts sounding the alarm bells. According to a study from MIT and Colorado State University, by the time 2050 rolls around, we could be staring down a serious food crisis why? Well, because of pollution, a shift toward those resource-intensive Western diets, and human-caused climate change, Earth is going to need 50% more food to feed its ever-growing population. That's a massive jump in demand. But here's the thing. We might struggle to meet it because global warming and ozone layer depletion could throw a wrench in our food production, reducing it by up to 10%. Plus, climate change will be messing with our food supplies through extreme weather events, floods, and droughts. Then there's an alien invasion something a lot of people believe to be a real possibility. According to them, aliens would swoop in from outer space with plans to wipe out humanity, enslave us, or maybe just turn us into their food. There's even a wild theory that aliens might swing by Earth to raid our resources or blow up the whole planet just for fun. But this rabbit hole goes much deeper. There are several conspiracy theories where some people believe that aliens have already made a stop on our planet through abductions. Ever heard of the Heaven's Gate cult? Led by Bonnie Nettles and Marshall Applewhite, this group of people believed that aliens were on their way to save the chosen humans. Sadly, the cult members took matters into their own hands in 1997, hoping to give up their earthly vessels and get a ride on an alien spacecraft trailing the comet Hale Bop. Then there's Project Bluebeam. This conspiracy theory suggests that big names in the Pentagon, NASA, and the United Nations are coming up with a plan to stage a fake alien invasion using hologram tech. The end game would be to throw us for a loop, ditch our religions and identities, and push us toward a new global order. Think about it. It would be a one-world religion, erasing national pride and tearing down family ties to make way for this grand new world order. Asteroids. Roughly 1 million asteroids are out there near Earth, according to the American Museum of Natural History. These aren't just your usual space rocks. Some of them could spell disaster if they decide to crash into our planet. Imagine a ginormous asteroid like 60 miles wide hurtling towards Earth. The aftermath would be unimaginable because if it hits the ocean, a tsunami wave of massive proportions would occur, wiping out coastal zones and causing chaos everywhere. On land, it's a whole different ball game. Massive wildfires would break out miles away from ground zero, followed by a long, dark winter, thanks to dust and debris blocking out the sunlight. So, while asteroids would lead to an ugly end of this planet, scientists aren't short of the worst-case scenarios that could unfold, possibly for the last time ever, 